Welcome to this week's episode of Chop the Rock. I'm Diana Long with the Little Rock River Market, and today our guest is Holly Sanders, who is with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission Nature Center here in the River Market District, and Holly is going to teach us all about Dutch oven cooking, which happens to be our state cooking vessel. It is, and thanks for having me today. Welcome. Uh, the Dutch oven is our state cooking vessel. Gov Governor Huckabee uh, assigned that in 2001. Okay. Um, and so uh, the Dutch oven has a lot of history with it. It actually came to Arkansas before we were a state. Oh, wow. So Dutch ovens and cast iron, you know, came from Europe, came over the ocean. So Dutch ovens have seen colonial fires. Uh, the Lewis and Clark used them in their expeditions. And of course, the uh, chuck wagon exploration used uh, Dutch ovens as well. But we can use them today. Uh, you can, in a Dutch oven, you can bake, you can fry, you can boil. Anything that you can do on a modern stove or in an oven, you can do uh, in a Dutch oven. So cast iron uh, pots and pans and vessels were very valued. Um, uh, people would uh, put them in their will who would get oh, wow. their Dutch oven pieces. Um, so they were uh, a great value. So I think it would have been worth it um, to carry them around. And they come in different sizes. So a Dutch oven like this, you can have like a six inch, which is really small, a 10 inch, a little bit smaller, all the way down to like a 16 inch, which is huge, which a lot of the, in the cowboy days, they might've had a big Dutch oven uh, to make up a mess of beans or something like that for, gotcha. for all the ranchers. But you could have one of these nice, prized, heavy mm -hmm. pieces and use it for everything, for the most part, that you would need for cooking. You can, you can. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about today's recipe okay. and what we are going to prepare. Okay, well today's recipe is Jetty May's uh, Panhandler Spaghetti. And uh, I got this recipe from Phyllis Spears, who's a retired Arkansas Game and Fish employee that many folks know. She used to do a lot of Dutch oven on AETN's uh, Arkansas Outdoors. Okay. And she's well known for that. So I've kind of used this recipe that she has. And I like this recipe because it's all in one. So you're gonna get your meat and your veggies and your pasta uh, all in one dish in your Dutch oven. And the way that the Dutch oven works is it is a convection heat. Oh. So we're, you use charcoal or, um, or wood, wood burning coals to provide your heat source. And uh, with the Dutch oven, you have a lid that has a lip on it. So it will hold the charcoal briquettes on the top. And then underneath the Dutch oven, which is a, a nickname, a camp oven, you have three feet. Gotcha. And so the feet are there so it can stand above your charcoal bed. Um, and so depending on the size of your Dutch oven and the degrees that you want to cook your recipe will depend on how many charcoal briquettes that you need. And so this Dutch oven is a 12 and so the lid of the Dutch oven will have the size of it which is the diameter of the lid. It's a 12 inch and most recipes are cooked at 350 degrees. Right. You know, right. give or take. And so uh, we kind of start with 350 degrees. And so with a 12 inch Dutch oven, we use a method um, that's three up, three down. It's called three up, three down. So for a Dutch oven, you would take the size of your Dutch oven, 12, and you would add three to go on top. So that's 15 charcoals on top. Gotcha. You would subtract three from 12, and that's how many charcoals you would put down. And that'll give you 350 degrees. Wow, okay. Yeah, so if you didn't have a chart, there's lots of charts out there online that tells you if you have this size oven, this degrees, this is how many charcoal you need on top and bottom. But if you're just out in the woods and you don't have access to the internet, that's a quick way to figure out, hey, that's how many charcoal I need. Okay. And if you needed 400 degrees, charcoal briquettes are about uh, 20 to 25 degrees each. So we just add a few to get you higher or lower. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. And and Lodge is actually the brand that makes most of the cast iron. Yeah, Lodge is a big uh, cast iron company uh, in America. So it's made in America. So yeah. it is made in America. And I know that their website also has these charts that you can and tips for 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 using and um, 
for seasoning, which uh, one of the right. things that you have to keep in mind is the care of a cast iron cooking vessel. Right. Um, so a lot of them, we were talking off air, they, they come pre-seasoned now, so you don't have to spend all that time getting one ready unless you're getting uh, purchasing one from a yard sale or from an estate sale and it's right. used and hasn't had any um, care in, in a long time and there are methods for that as well. Um, but let's talk about just how you would kind of clean one of those up and store it before we get into sure, here. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, fortunately for us nowadays, uh, if you purchase a Dutch oven, it becomes pre-seasoned and you don't have to mess with that. But a lot of uh, Dutch ovens are handed down, which is very special from family members uh, that you want to keep seasoned uh, or like you said, you find them. And so uh, if you have a Dutch oven, it, it's an investment. It lasts uh, forever. It can last forever and you can pass it down uh, to generations uh, below you. So, to, but to keep it nice and slick so it doesn't stick for you, uh, you want to store it well. And so after you cook, um, you want to wash it out with hot water. No uh, soap. Yeah, you, we tend not to use soap uh, because that might strip uh, the seasoning on right. it. But uh, really hot water, you can wash it out. If, if something's really stuck on it, you could boil it a little bit. But you can use a scraper and just scrape it out. And once it's clean, you want to dry it really, really well. And then on the in, inside and the outside, after it's dry, you'll just take a little oil, uh, vegetable oil or flaxseed oil, or I've even used Pam spray, and just uh, coat the inside and outside of your Dutch oven um, with a paper towel. So I just wipe it down with the oil. And you want just a thin coat of oil. So you just want to wipe it in really, really well. And so then it's coated and protected for the, for the next use. And then when you store it, you want to make sure you have air circulated uh, in the Dutch oven. So you always want to put like a towel or a folded paper towel uh, in between there. And that way air gets in, circulates, and evaporates any moisture. So it doesn't that get that sticky there. feeling that Sticky sometimes... or rust. Mm -hmm. A lot of times folks have cast iron, they're like, man, it's rusted. It's just, uh, you just have to care for it a little bit better to help prevent the rust. I know that the iron skillets that I have for the most part were handed down from my grandmothers. Um, and so that's a really special thing in the family to have is that skillet that your grandmother used to make your favorite dishes and then you end up with that. And right, so I always a say great... a Dutch oven holds a lot of stories. And I even have a lot of stories in the Dutch ovens I use with Game of Fish because I've used them uh, to cook with women that are learning about the outdoors. I've used them to cook for uh, the parents of of children who are off police officers that have fallen and you know that's helped them therapy wise to sure. get together and cook and they've talked about their stories of their children I've cooked with kids uh, so and I've cooked with my own family so just a lot of stories go in here so every time you pull out your Dutch oven and and you use it more stories go back in there it's a great so, that's a great concept yeah. and something that we do often talk about on chop the rock is how the, the cooking and the eating part and, and that having that social experience really is a bonding thing for friends and for families and even, you know, co-workers and that kind of thing. And right. so it really is it, sociologically one of the best ways mm -hmm. for people to to build some connections and share a meal and, right. and has been throughout our history. Food so. is a universal concept. We all have to eat. We do. So. We all have to <laughs> eat. Okay, so let's get going here. Let's talk about all the things that we have Okay. Um, that we're going to cook with here. Right, so you need a little bit of gear uh, with your Dutch oven. So uh, this Dutch oven has feet, so it's a camp oven, so you use it to cook outside. If you do have just your regular Dutch oven that doesn't have feet, but it's cast iron, you can use a crushed soda can or rocks to put it up high above, above the charcoal. So you don't have to rush out and go buy a special Dutch oven right. if you already have one. Uh, but it is a nice investment um, to, to buy a camp oven. And, and it's used a lot outside, so I've taken this camping with me. I've cooked at deer camp uh, with this, um, taken it out uh, for if we've gone to an uh, Arkansas State Park and we want to have a nice dinner outside, take your Dutch oven. Uh, so it's a lot better to me if I've been camping and hiking or canoeing all day, if I can come back to a warm meal. And that's what the Dutch oven can give give for you. That's so right. uh, a couple of things you need since this does use charcoal. Uh, you are going to need some charcoal and we recommend Kingsford um, charcoal uh, because it lasts longer. Oh okay. Uh, with um, you know giving you that heat source. 
Also, do not use charcoal that has um, a lighter fluid on it because you don't want it to burn fast. You want right. a charcoal that burns even and slow. Right, and the, one of the best ways to get with, to use charcoal in any kind of a setting without having to use lighter fluid mm -hmm. is to use one of these starters here, right. which are really easy to, this is what I use at home so that I don't have the extra chemicals from a lighter fluid right. on the food that I'm grilling or um, even in this situation, it does not burn it out so so quickly. Right, charcoal chimneys are great. They protect it from the weather, so if it's windy that day, you have your charcoal nice and protected. It has a handle on it so you can use it uh, without burning yourself, and so they are great. Uh, charcoal chimney, even if you're just grilling, like you said. Uh, so with the charcoal chimney, you just take some paper and, and crumble it up and put it in the bottom. Yeah. Just like that and then you uh, fill it up with charcoal and usually one charcoal chimney of briquettes is pretty good for a 350 degree uh, oven Okay. with that. Also you have a lid lifter so uh, during the Dutch oven process you may want to lift the lid and check it out a little bit to see how it's doing or sometimes especially if you're baking uh, we might turn the lid so about every so often you'll turn the lid like a quarter and that just makes sure that it's evenly heated because charcoals aren't perfectly round. So you might have some big ones over here and some right. over here that have kind of gotten smaller. So if you turn the lid occasionally, it'll just kind of um, get the heat even okay. and cook it through. So lid lifters are great. If you don't have one, you can definitely use your uh, a good heavy duty oven mitt. Yeah, because that's um, gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot, right. And you can buy one of these, but I've seen people, they've been very creative and they've fashioned and made a lot of their own uh, lid, lid, lid lifters. Gotcha. Uh, a stand is nice to have. Um, with the Dutch oven, when you're done, you can set your Dutch oven on the table uh, so it doesn't burn um, the table. Uh, also with the Dutch oven stand, uh, if you wanna take a look, you don't have to set it on the dirty ground. Ah. You have a stand to set it on. And then you can even turn uh, the uh, stand over, turn your lid over, and now you have a griddle. So I've, I've griddled pancakes, hoe cakes. Uh, I've even uh, done some bacon on there. And sure. Some scrambled eggs. Right. So now you have a griddle. So, so it really is the... very much an all-in-one utensil when it comes to particularly outdoor cooking. Right. Uh, definitely you want to have some tongs. Uh, because once the charcoal is done and it's nice and gray and it's red, um, you want to you're going to have to place your charcoal specifically. So uh, for a 350 degree oven, we're probably going to put about 18 on top and nine on the bottom. And so I would put get the charcoal out, put nine uh, on the bottom here in a circular pattern because you want it to be even. And then I would take nine charcoal briquettes and place them around the lip of the Dutch oven lid, and maybe one or two uh, in the middle there. Gotcha, okay. Yep. okay. And these aluminum pans come in handy. Uh, they keep your charcoal protected from the elements, um, and also so your Dutch oven fits right in there. And those are just hog pans that I bought from the local farm store. Yeah. Uh, but, but you can use a, a large cookie sheet um, or any type of aluminum or metal container Right. To help contain everything. So if you were if you were doing this like at a campsite, then you could absolutely set this on some, some rocks or just maybe on the plain dirt. But right. if you were gonna maybe experiment with this a little bit at home, you don't wanna burn your deck. Right, right. If you if it's wood. Um, and it wouldn't cause a fire, but it would burn that It'd make wood a black top, circle. Right. That you would not be able to get off. Yeah, so, so you wanna lift that up on some bricks or uh, on a grate or something like that. Or maybe you take everything out of your grill and kind of put mm -hmm. this in the sure. bottom and then it's, yep. it's really protected I've even used way. the Dutch oven in my fire ring on my deck, you know, not even bothered with the pan, just put it right in my fire ring. Right. You know, I've done that as well. And, and I use this at home quite a bit. Uh, comes in handy when the electricity goes out or if I need an extra oven. So I might have a turkey in the oven, my dessert here or a side like green beans in the Dutch oven that's cooking a long time mm -hmm. uh, out on the deck and my family can gather around so, uh, so that's a nice you don't have to thing. necessarily go camping to use your Dutch oven 
Right, right. And you can, I mean, you know, you don't. And, and one of the things is as we get into the cooler weather and it's fall and, and you know, people want to spend more time outside because right. it feels good. And so if you're hosting maybe an event or just, you know, dinner at your house just for right. yourself and your family, um, that'd be a great way to, to cook outdoors in your one big pot dish while you enjoyed the outdoors. So you're not having to run inside the house and, and back and forth and, and check right. things and you can kind of enjoy that time as that meal prepares. Right. Kind of just relaxing. Yeah. Uh, which even, is even, with, even easier even than with a grill. tailgating, you can make a, a mess of nachos in one of these. Uh, so even with tailgating, we just say a Dutch oven's another way to find your outside, you know, to go outdoors. That's right. Yeah. And if you're a hundred percent averse to outdoors, which you know, we don't we don't have a whole lot of people like that in Surely Arkansas. Surely there's nobody we, like that. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> but some people may just be, you know, not outdoors people. If you have a standard Dutch oven that is meant for using in your oven at home, these recipes absolutely translate into that and vice right. versa. So if you, if you have a recipe that's meant for cooking in a Dutch oven, um, at home and the recipe has that information in it, you can very easily translate that and take that same recipe outdoors with you to use in this kind of a Right, Dutch anything oven. you can cook in the oven or on the stove, you can do outdoors in this and vice versa. Great, yeah. All right, so let's get started. What, let's get started. What's the rest of this that we have here that goes into this recipe? Well, here? this panhandler spaghetti is wild, so we're using venison meat. So we have uh, deer meat here that's I've already kind of skilleted up uh, with a little bit of garlic. Uh, we use fresh bell pepper and onion, uh, sharp cheddar cheese. Um, and then we, we, we have a few canned goods. Uh, we have uh, kernel corn, mushrooms, uh, diced tomatoes, and then our spice today is gonna be Italian spice and some beef bouillon cubes. Okay, yeah. all right. And so this is kind of a, a dump what I call a dump recipe. You kind of I love dump those. it all together. Yeah. And so you'll have just a, a kind of a, a one pot meal right in here. So. Those are those are great because yeah. it's less cook it, uh, cooking in different things that you have to watch and it's way less clean up at the end of the meal. And he wants to be happy and right. stuffed after the <laughs> meal and have to do just a whole bunch of cleaning. Yeah. And so yeah. while you're dumping this in here, I mean, let's talk about venison. Obviously, if you're not into red meat or wild game, you can, you can substitute out. That's the fun thing you about can. cooking right. um, is that you can substitute so many things to your personal preference. But if you're into very eating healthy and lean meats and organics, right. it really doesn't get any better than venison. <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, we, we kind of call it uh, a wood to, a woods to table. So, um, you know, deer here in Arkansas or elk, that's about as organic as you can get from meat. It's very lean. Uh, if you um, skillet it up, you're gonna find very little fat yeah. left over that you have to strain out. Uh, so it's very healthy and obviously organic. So uh, definitely it's, it's uh, and it's tasty. So. It really is. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of dishes, um, I, kn I know that growing up eating a lot of wild game which is just the kind of family that i come from and being a, a kid who might go ooh, yeah i don't you know then my parents would not tell me what was in it right. and they would they would pretend like whatever we were eating was what i was used to eating and then i would love it and ask for a second helping and they'd say oh yeah <laughs> so you like the deer this or the you know rabbit that or whatever and at that point i was already sold on it so i was totally right. okay with it right and you can, you know, you can skillet this meat up right in here. So before we put the lid on, you can go ahead and put charcoal underneath it. And then you can um, saute your meat and get it brown. Um, put any seasoning that you like in it. A lot of times when I go camping, though, I kind of pre-prep. I'm like, I might uh, go ahead and chop up my veggies or pre-cook a lot of my meat and put it in a Ziploc baggie and put it in the ice chest. And that saves me a little bit of time, like you said. You know, so instead of uh, cooking, I might get to hang out a little bit more with my family. Right. But I love cooking, so um, that's, to me, that's part of the camp experience. Sure, so yep. a quick question. If you are going to brown this meat in this pan mm -hmm. and then cook this, do you need to, would that require adding some charcoal afterwards? Yeah, or? I would probably add a little bit charcoal underneath it, um, just so it'll skill it up really Quickly. Right, just for the browning right. part, and then and then kind of restart that process with the correct amount of charcoal for the baking part. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and what I, what I have learned with uh, Dutch oven cooking, it's just like cooking at home. You make a lot of judgment calls. So maybe I have the correct amount of charcoal on top and bottom according to the charts. But maybe it's not cooking as fast as I think it is. You know, a lot of times the weather has a lot to do with that. Um, if it's really cold outside, you might need, need a little bit more charcoal. If it's really hot, you may not. Uh, so just use your instinct and your judgment in cooking. So sometimes uh, I might add some extra charcoal. So it doesn't mean you're breaking the rules. I like people to be flexible gotcha. uh, when cooking. And so and with... With anything, obviously, you know, the, the, more you, the more you practice, the better off it's going to be. So, right. so it may be, it may seem like kind of a daunting thing to do this for the first time, but as you, as you grow, you'll grow more comfortable with it with the more experience you have, and then you'll have a better base um, of guideline to judge it on. Um, and the, and, and so. that's true. There are a, a lot of folks here in Arkansas that Dutch oven and uh, cook and they actually gather and they, they cook together and they share recipes and they do competitions. Oh, cool. So we have competitions in Arkansas for Dutch oven cooking. In fact, I judged the first state Dutch oven uh, cook-off in Moralton, Arkansas a few years ago. And um, so it's, it's a big following. So it's definitely another way to be social uh, right. here in Central Arkansas. And so I've met a lot of folks that Dutch oven cook and um, when you Dutch oven cook a lot, a lot of times you can just eyeball it. Ah, that looks like enough charcoal. Mm. You know, just kind of like at home. Right. When you've done a recipe over and over, you may not need to measure anymore. And you may not even need to look at the recipe That's anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So with these canned vegetables, they come um, with li in their own liquid. So you want to not drain the vegetables. So we're so going to put that in liquid. some mushrooms. And you don't need to um, pre-cook the onion or green pepper that I pulled in, I, I put in there. Because the liquid is what is going to cook our pasta. We're gotcha. going to put our pasta in there dry. So we're just going to spread that around. We've got our kernel corn. So you had about one whole white onion um, and, and one green pepper. One green pepper, kind of coarsely chopped. Right. Um, then you've got the two small cans here, which is a total of eight ounces of the mushrooms. If you didn't like mushrooms, but you like something else, right. just sub that out. Uh, one can of whole kernel sweet corn. And, and then this then is a... This is a large 28 ounce uh, diced tomato um, as well. You know, and maybe you have some canned tomatoes. You know, right. uh, so that would, you know, be great. Just make sure you get that liquid in there. And then we're going to put uh, four bouillon cubes in there if you want to help me unwrap those. Sure. And about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. You know, and if you really like basil, like I love basil, you might could put some fresh basil in there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're camping, you know, you may not bring, you know, the fresh basil with Just you. Just a but. bunch of different things too. I mean, you know, and so this blend of Italian seasoning kind of covers a little bit of right. everything. So you only have to have one jar, right. which means you're packing lighter ultimately. And that's always a good thing when you're right, packing Right, because I, I kind of like a campground that's not overcome with, with items. And so right. I try to keep my kitchen uh, tidy and less is better. Right. And then I have some uh, sharp uh, shredded cheddar cheese here. And I'm just going to put about half of that uh, in here and save the other half for later. We'll put on top. Okay. And that's a couple of cups? That's eight ounces. Eight ounces. So. For the whole, for the whole uh, bowl. Gotcha. And then our spaghetti, and you can use any type of spaghetti noodles that you want to. Um, they don't, they usually come in about 16 ounce boxes and you're not going to use the whole box. Gotcha. So we're going to use about 10 ounces, which I eyeball. And um, what you're going to want to do is uh, break them up kind of small. So we'll break these up. It doesn't have to be perfect but you don't want them super long. Gotcha. 
And so, like, if you preferred a macaroni noodle or a gluten free, gluten free, noodles, they wheat make noodles. they make them with right. like some kind of protein added anymore. And so, right. it doesn't have to be a spaghetti style no. noodle either. Um, you might could even use like one of those wider the the no yolk uh, the egg noodles oh, the egg that noodles? you would use yes. in a chicken noodle soup. Right. And so, if you have a oh, if you have a pasta preference, up. obviously um, you can you can switch that out as well. All right. So, um, so we've got about 10 ounces of noodles in there hard, and I kind of mix them in, and so they're gonna get down into that liquid. And then meanwhile, while you're making this, we've had our charcoal. We would have had our charcoal ready to go. And so we would put the lid on here, and then we would move the Dutch oven uh, to our charcoal bed. Gotcha. And with this one, it is 350 degrees, it's the 12 inch, so we, we put about 15 to 18 charcoals on top and nine on the bottom. And nine on the bottom. Right, and so that's going to cook 30 to 40 minutes and um, turning the lid about a quarter of a turn every so often, you know, just to get that even. But if you forget to do that, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, it's still going to cook. <laughs> well, and you wanted to, looking at the recipe, you wanted to kind of check that halfway and maybe stir it up. Right. But you don't want to open your lid a whole bunch of times. Just like when you're baking in an oven, the more times you open that oven to, to look in, the, the more times that you let some of that heat out and then it has to kind of readjust right. to get, keep that constant temperature. And so. Right. With this one, you'll want to check about 20 minutes in and give it a stir because you may have some of the noodles on top that aren't getting the liquid. Right. So you'll move them down uh, into the liquid and make sure um, uh, it gets cooked. And um, I always say use your nose. So maybe the recipe says 30 minutes, but maybe it's really hot outside. So it might cook faster. So if you really start smelling it, especially if it's a baked item like cinnamon rolls or biscuits, you know, you're gonna wanna check it. Yeah, um, that's good. My yeah. rule for baked goods like biscuits or cakes um, is about um, a quarter away through your time, cooking time, remove the charcoals from the bottom and put those on top. And that way it won't burn, but it'll brown. Oh, nice, top. okay. So a lot of times folks are like, I cook biscuits in the Dutch oven, but they always burn on the bottom or, or they get really dark on the bottom. So just move those charcoals off the bottom, you know, about, you know, 20 minutes into your cooking time and then put them on top and then it, it probably won't burn on the bottom if you do that. So that's a little tip. That's a good yeah. tip. That's yeah. great. So, okay, so since we're cooking inside and, and please don't do any kind of charcoal cooking <laughs> inside your home or inside any other place ever because that is very, very dangerous. Um, so we went ahead and, and Holly was nice enough to pre-prepare um, this meal for us so that we could demonstrate how, how to prepare it, what the techniques are. And so we'll bring over and show yeah. the finished meal. Sure. I'll help you here. I'll get some plates and we can plate this up. And so you can see that this was charcoal cooked because the lid is all gray from mm -hmm. the charcoal um, that we had. And uh, about, oh, five or ten minutes before it's done, just put that extra cheese on top and um, and then when it's done, you can combine it all, and, and then you have it. So this, this Dutch oven has been sitting here for a good hour and a half um, while we prepped and that kind of thing. And it is not hot, so that's why Holly was able to just pick up the lid with her hand. Obviously, don't do that right. when it's fresh hot. Yes. But I just want to note that this is, this is plenty of warm. warm. Yeah. And so if you are using one of these, um, it smells so good too. <laughs> if you're using one of these, know that, I mean, you don't have, you could, this is gonna stay warm for a, a while. So, um, you know, maybe if you came back to the camp, whether that be deer mm -hmm. camp or hunting to go ahead and kind of get this ready and everybody right. else is gonna follow you. If you'll just leave the, you know, take it off of the heat right. so that it doesn't overcook, but leave the lid on and, and don't really disturb it. It'll keep your it meal will. warm for a good, I'm going to say a good hour and a half at right. least that it would still be just 
it's way it's more than right. room temperature. It's just so right. perfect eating yeah. temperature here. So um, let's try this. Okay. Okay. It looks really good. Yeah, and um, I've cooked it with, uh, I've cooked this dish with ground deer, ground elk uh, before, and ground beef, mm -hmm. and also chopped uh, venison. And I kind of prefer the chopped uh, uh, venison. You know, and like we were saying, if you if you weren't, I encourage everybody to, to try some, some venison, mm -hmm. but um, if, if that's just not your thing, you could use a, a ground beef, ground turkey, or just extra veggies. Yeah, a stew yeah. meat, even like a mm -hmm. like a the the ch pre chopped meat you would get for stew. Or if you're a vegetarian, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't substitute the meat altogether with some additional vegetables that you right. like. Portobello mushrooms. Oh, portobello yeah. mushrooms would be a great yeah. substitute in there. Um, you could do some fresh broccoli in addition to that, or maybe mm -hmm. add a little bit of um, extra pasta or even some quinoa to kind of give it that that thickness that you would be missing right. with just not having the meat. That's why it's called panhandler spaghetti. It's whatever you have on hand, you know. Ah, like a it's goulash. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> right, so you can clean out the well, fridge. So um, let's taste this. So We've been smelling say. it for a while. This uh, venison was donated uh, by a friend for us to use today. Oh, it's fantastic. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's and really I, good. And you notice I really didn't use uh, any salt or pepper. I was just about to say that mm -hmm. the only seasoning, aside from what was already kind of in the in the vegetables itself, was the the minced garlic that you just lightly browned right. the venison in, and the Italian seasoning. Yeah. And it doesn't. And, and the bouillon has quite a bit it of sodium in it. Probably does have some sodium. So. Um, but there's no need to add any other salt and pepper in this. It's a perfectly no. <laughs> seasoned dish. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm just kind of amazed at how good this is and how great all these flavors are that, that kind of come together. Right, and a lot of times if you Dutch oven cook a lot, uh, you might invest in another Dutch oven and you can actually do what's called stacking. So while this is cooking and it has charcoal on top, you can stack another Dutch oven on top of that. Oh, wow. And so now that Dutch oven is using this charcoal, you add some on the top, so I might have some garlic rolls, or maybe dessert, like a cobbler um, cooking as well. So that would be a double dutch. Oven. Yeah, double dutch. <laughs> <laughs> it would. Um, okay, so if you're interested in, in learning how to do this, mm -hmm. and, and this show isn't quite enough for you to really feel like you've got it, um, uh, Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, um, the, the Nature Center that's here in the River Market District, just behind the Museum of Discovery Building, right. does offer a couple of classes every year um, that are taught by Holly right. um, in, in Dutch oven cooking. And so um, tell me about when those classes mm -hmm. are, how would people find information about that and, okay. and get signed up for that? Well, uh, the Nature Center has a Facebook page under our name, Whit Stevens Jr. Central Arkansas Nature Center. You can also go to agfc.com and visit the calendar there. Um, that's where we list all of our programs that we do. But uh, every fall uh, in November, I do a basic Dutch oven class. Uh, so to be the first Sunday in November, you can sign up for that and uh, you will learn all about Dutch oven cooking, how to do it. And then we will make about five recipes, oh, wow. uh, cook them and then eat them. Great. So it's, it's a great workshop. And then in February, I do a Beyond the Basics Dutch oven cooking. Uh, February is when uh, the Dutch oven was named our official vessel, so it's kind of celebrating that. But I'll do an advanced course um, where even if you're, if you're a novice, you're welcome to come. But we'll, we'll kind of do more complicated recipes um, or use more wild game meat or do the stacking or there's a, a other trip, uh, tips and tricks that you can do with a Dutch oven, like how to make it into a bunt type oh, wow. pan and okay. that kind of thing. And so we kind of explore that. And so that's that's in February that we'll have that. And I believe this year, uh, the theme for February is gonna be wild about pies. So we'll do pizza pies, meat pies, and sweet pies. That's fantastic. Yeah. So today we have learned about the Dutch oven cooking, how you can get some more information about that where you can go and, and, and learn exactly how to do it in a, in a class type setting at the Nature Center. Um, and I think that 
the, one of the cool things that we wanted to showcase here today, besides this amazing way to cook, was that there's so much more about the Nature Center than just walking through and looking at exhibits. And right. so you have the Dutch oven classes, you can pick up your fishing license there. You can, you can even buy your lifetime fishing license there now. Right. I know that y'all have archery classes and different programs throughout the year that, that really, you know, kind of help um, teach kids and adults too. It's not just for children and it is a free admission. Right. Yeah, uh, our, one of our missions at the Nature Center is to help people find their outside. So whatever that may be, it may be through hunting and fishing, it may be through photography or hiking or canoeing, bird watching or even cooking. So we try to offer uh, programs or workshops to help people gain those skills uh, to get them outside uh, more often. But we also have programs that highlight the fish and wildlife of Arkansas, you know, to help people learn about the animals that live around them outside and the plants. Um, so when they do go outside, uh, they can see so much more uh, around them. So we, uh, we do programs for the little toddlers all the way up to seniors. So um, everyone's welcome and it's always free thanks to the one eighth of a cent conservation sales tax uh, here in Arkansas. That is yeah. fantastic. And right here in the River Market District, um, so easy to get to, um, you know, just walking right on down. And yep. tell, me, tell me what the Nature Center's hours are. Uh, we are open Tuesday through Saturday, eight to 4.30 and on Sundays, one to five. Okay, great. Yeah, and sometimes if we do, we may have clinics in the evening, but we'll advertise that. And so sometimes we do evening events as well. Well, thanks so much for coming on and thanks sharing this me. great technique and all this information and the food is delicious. So I'm gonna, I'm ready to end the show yeah. so that we can <laughs> eat now, right? Absolutely. Well, I wanna thank y'all for joining us for this week's episode of Chop the Rock and stay tuned for our next episode. Again, if you're looking for more information about the Witt Stevens Jr. Nature Center, um, you can visit them online at uh, agfc.com. agfc.com or look for their Facebook page. Great, thank you. Thank you for having me.